Hi, my name's Sam Hendrick, and I am from Bentley Systems, but you probably already know that from the logo on my shirt. You've joined us in the ninth video in the series of 10 for MicroStation Connect Edition, The Basics. In this video, we're gonna talk about how do we attach external data. Now, what is external data? For us, that's gonna be a DGN file and a raster, and your plus one is gonna be a reality mesh. But external data can take the form of many different things. I can attach a DWG, a DXF, I can attach a shape file. All kinds of data can be attached to a MicroStation file. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's open the first file. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to attach external data. Now that external data can take the form of a DGN, DWG, a raster file, or a reality mesh. We're going to first talk about attaching DGNs. So the file we're going to open up is layout 007. Now I'm currently in the drawing workflow and my tab is set to home. And under home, there's a group called primary and there's attached tools. I'm going to go ahead and click on this and you can see there's four possible choices. We have references, raster manager, point clouds, and reality mesh. I'm gonna be choosing references. This will open up my reference file dialog box, and I'm gonna choose this icon right here to attach a reference. Now it's going to take me to the last place that I attached a reference. In this case, it was the folder I'm working in, and I'm gonna attach just one file, and I'm gonna have it set to interactive, there are other choices. Coincident world is one of them. Just keep that in the back of your head. I'm going to attach topo contours. I'm going to select open. This is the dialog we refer to as that is interactive. Now I'm going to be choosing coincident world and everything else is going to be set as the defaults full size. I'm going to click OK. You can see the topo is now attached in the background. Now the other files that I had, I want to attach all of them and they're all coordinate correct and they're all gonna have coincident world as the setting. So I'm gonna go back to attach reference. I'm gonna be selecting multiple files, but first I'm gonna change my attachment method to coincident world. It will skip that other dialog and attach all of the reference files that are selected as coincident world. So I'm gonna select alignment, roadway, and right of way. All of those selected. Again, I'm holding down the control key to do this. I'm gonna click open and you can see all of them are attached at one time. Now with the reference file dialog box still open, we're going to clip the reference files because we don't need to see everything. We only need to see what is inside this red shape here. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of the reference files. And on the reference file dialog box, we have a little icon, scissors next to a file, a paper. It's called clip reference. I'm gonna select it. On my tool settings window, I have several options, active fence, element, and named fence. I don't have a fence active, nor do I have named fences, so element is the only choice that's available. I'm going to leave that selected. Then I'm going to select the element that I want to use as the clipping element. And now I've clipped all those reference files. And because I clipped it by element, that element represents the clip boundary. If I select that element and I make modifications to it, change its size, you can see all of the reference files change. I'm gonna go ahead and do an undo. Now you'll see a red boundary around here. This is because I have one or more reference files selected and my highlight mode is set to boundaries. So if I unselect that, we just go back to the red shape there. Now that's attaching reference files. And if I go to my level display, which is under my primary, under the level display, you'll see each one of the reference files listed. And as I select them, you're going to see their levels individually displayed. So I can control the on off state of those reference files and their levels individually. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. We're gonna go ahead and close our reference file dialog box because now we're gonna talk about raster. So I'm gonna go back up to my primary and go to attach tools and you're gonna see raster managers there. I'm gonna select that and then the raster manager dialog appears. And on the raster manager dialog, much like the reference file dialog, we have a series of menu bar items and icons. The shortcut, I'm gonna click right here where it says attach raster. You can see the different types of rasters I can attach, raster, WMS, everything to Bing Maps. I'm gonna be attaching a JPEG, so I'm gonna choose raster. 
it's going to come up and ask me where is the file. So I'm going to go under my folder here called imagery. And the file that I plan to attach is JPEG1. And on this dialog here, you can see I have some options. I can attach it read only. I can attach it placing it interactively, which I would do if I had no coordinates to the file. But the, the file does have a world or sister file, so it'll come in coordinate correct. And then I have an open settings dialog. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click open. This is the dialog box. Here we can choose things like place interactively, which I had an option on the prior dialog. We also have ways to attach the raster, the attachment of the raster to a specific level. It's always recommended that you attach the raster to a level that is not something you work with that you'll be turning on and off. In this case, I have a level called underscore raster. It's dedicated just for rasters. I'm going to click the attach button. And there's my raster attached in the background. Now I'm going to go ahead and clip the raster because I don't need to see all of this, just like I did with the other reference files. I'm going to go and select my raster in the list box. Now, if I wanted to turn the raster off, I could do it by selecting it and clicking the view number I want to turn it off in right down here. So I can turn off the raster here or I can turn it back on. In this case, I want to just clip it. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the reference files. I'm going to clip it by that red shape. So I'm going to go to the edit pull down menu on the raster manager, slide on down to clip. On the tool settings window, you're going to see there's several options. Element is the one I'm interested in. So I'm going to select element. I'm going to pick that same red shape and there's my raster clipped. So that's a way to attach reference files and raster. Now, if you don't have a raster, Let's say you don't have aerial information and you would like to bring that in and your file is coordinate correct and has a geographic coordinate system. I'm going to show you another way to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my raster, close the raster manager. I'm going to go to my utilities tab and on the utilities tab, you can see where it says coordinate system. If I click on this, if my file has a geographic coordinate system, then MicroStation knows where it's at and mine does have one. So now I'm going to be able to turn on Bing Maps. I'm going to do that by going to my View Attributes. And on the View Attributes dialog at the bottom, Background Map. Now, if you don't have a geographic coordinate system attached, you will not see that as an option. So I'm going to tell it I would like to see street maps. And you can see street maps show up in the background. I can also just say, show me Arial. And you'll see Arial. And then I can also do a hybrid where I see Arial and I see street names. So that's if you don't have Arial information, this will let you bring it up in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and set that back to none. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is what's called a reality mesh. And what you see here is a program called Context Capture. Each one of these little points indicates where the drone was when it took the picture. If I rotate this around, you get an idea of the drone's flight path. And what you're seeing below this is the reality model that was created from the photographs. So we're going to switch back to MicroStation. We're going to be opening up a different file. So I'm going to go to File Open. I'm going to open up a file called Vista Point. And we're going to go back to our Home tab. And again, under the primary group, we're going to go back to attach tools. And the last one at the bottom there is reality mesh. I'm going to select that. I'm going to now select the attach reality mesh icon. It wants to know where the file is that I want to attach. In this case, it's a 3SM file, a scalable mesh model. I'm going to click on the open. Here's my file. It's called vistapoint.com. 3SM or scalable mesh model. I'm going to go ahead and click open. Click OK. And you can see the scalable mesh model appears in the background. Now this is a 3D file. So if I zoom in, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my view. You can see there's the reality mesh in 3D. And we'll go ahead and rotate to the top view. And then just to see that this comes in coordinate correct, we're going to go and turn on the Bing Maps in the background. So again, I'll go to my View Attributes. Down here, I'm going to change the background map 
to hybrid. You can see it appears in the background. Again, I'll rotate my view so you can see that my reality mesh is floating up above the Bing maps in the background. Again, we'll rotate around to a top view. We'll go ahead and turn this off. Now this is MicroStation and I can now, let's close this dialog, work in relationship to this reality mesh in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the view around and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and I'm gonna to go to my workflow called modeling. I'm gonna to go to the solids tab and then I'm gonna choose slab and I'm gonna go ahead and draw in a slab. So I'm just gonna pick a point on my mesh, rotate my compass to top. I'm gonna to go ahead and come down here and I'm gonna go across and we're gonna go across one foot and then I'm gonna go ahead and move this up and basically draw in a wall. So I rotate my view around. Now I'm modeling inside MicroStation in relationship to my reality mesh. So hopefully you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.